All right, everyone. So um, let's talk about fall. Fall. Yeah. You know, it's basic. Right. right. But you have to admit it the second that like first leaf turns, there's just something in the air. Yeah. Like we're hardwired to love it. And before you say it. Pumpkin spice lattes. Yes. We're going way deeper than the pumpkin spice latte on this deep dive today. Oh, absolutely. We are going beyond the surface because that's what you, our listener, you're all about, right? Yeah. You want those unexpected insights, those aha moments, even maybe especially in something as familiar as fall. Exactly. And that's where our source material comes in. 50 journal prompts for those reflecting on fall from the blog list stallion. <laughs> okay. Don't worry, we're not actually journaling. Right. But we're using these prompts as a springboard to uncover some really interesting perspectives. What's fascinating here is that journal prompts, by their very nature, they kind of push us to look at the familiar in a new light, to find fresh meaning, you know, yeah. even in the everyday. And that's a powerful tool no matter the season. Totally. So the stallion lays out 50 prompts in five sections. We've got fall reflections, fall moments, even just reading those titles. Don't you already feel a little cozier? I do, and I think there's something to be said about that feeling, but keep going. What else grabs you? Okay, so then it gets even juicier. We've got fall changes, mindful fall days. Yeah. Oh, and the kicker, looking ahead. I like that structure. It mirrors the natural progression of the season itself, moving from outward observations to this inward reflection. It's giving breadth and depth, which if I know our listeners, is exactly what you're here for. 100%. And the prompts themselves are where the real magic happens. For example, what changes do you notice in nature during fall? Seems obvious. But then you start thinking about the science of those like vibrant leaf colors. And that's where things get really interesting because it's not just about the leaves changing color. It's about the why, the shift in daylight hours, the breakdown of chlorophyll, the emergence of other pigments like carotenoids and anthocyanins. Well, hold on. You're already speaking my language and it's not even my native tongue. Yeah. So you're saying there's more to those fiery reds and golden yellows than meets the eye. Oh, absolutely. Those colors are a result of complex chemical processes, a beautiful interplay of light, temperature, and pigments. And each tree species has its own unique combination, its own story to tell. It's like nature's own fireworks display, but on a molecular level. Okay, that is so cool. It's amazing how something we see every year can still hold these hidden depths, these little scientific marvels that we often miss. And that's the beauty of these prompts. They encourage us to slow down, to observe, to ask why, instead of just accepting what we see, they make us active participants in our own learning. I love that. Okay, so we've got the science of fall colors down. Mm. But let's not forget the classics Lestallion throws in this age-old question. What's the best book to read in the fall? Ah, uh, yes, the quintessential fall book debate. Because nothing says cozy like curling up with a good read as the leaves fall outside. But what makes a fall book, I wonder? Is it the themes of change and reflection? The atmospheric setting? Now, those are questions worth exploring. See, this is what I love about this deep dive already. We're taking something as simple as a journal prompt and uncovering all these layers of meaning. Exactly. And it's not just about the books themselves. It's about the rituals we build around them. That feeling of wrapping yourself in a warm blanket, a cup of tea steaming beside you, completely lost in another world as the wind howls outside. Okay, stop. You're painting a picture that's both vivid and oddly specific. And you're right. It's more than just the book itself. It's the entire experience, the sensory details that make it a uniquely fall experience. Exactly. And those sensory details are something that Listellian really hones in on, especially in the fall reflection section. There's a prompt that asks you to describe the colors of fall in words. What words come to mind for you? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's like trying to capture a sunset in a jar. No. Oh. But I think for me, it's the word burnished that really gets at the heart of it. That sense of warmth depth, a richness that only comes with time, like those leaves have been slowly simmering in the sun all summer, and now their true colors are finally being revealed. I love that burnished perfectly captures that sense of depth and complexity. It's not just yellow, it's burnished gold. It's not just red, it's a deep, rich crimson, like a fine wine. Yes, and it's not just the colors, right? It's the smell of crisp air, the sound of leaves crunching underfoot, all those sensory details that make fall so evocative. And by tapping into those sensory experiences, we become more present in the moment. We're not just rushing through our day, we're actually experiencing the season with all our senses. It's like hitting the pause button on autopilot yeah. and really immersing ourselves in the here and now. Precisely. And that's such a valuable practice, especially in a world that's constantly demanding our attention. Fall, with its slower pace and invitation to turn inward, offers the perfect opportunity to cultivate that mindfulness. 
Speaking of mindfulness, the next section, fall moments, seems to dive even deeper into that idea, mm -hmm. right? It's about those little things, those quintessential fall moments that make the season so special. Absolutely. It's about finding joy in the everyday, in the simple act of putting on a cozy sweater or watching the sunset paint the sky in breathtaking hues. You know, I've always wondered what makes fall sunsets so different from sunsets in other seasons. They just hit different. You know? uh, there's actually a fascinating scientific reason for that. It's all about the angle of the sun. As the days get shorter and the sun hangs lower in the sky, the light has to travel through more of the Earth's atmosphere to reach us. And that's where the magic happens. Okay, I am all ears laid on me. Yeah. You're telling me there's a reason why those oranges and reds are so much more vibrant in the fall? Exactly. Yeah. As sunlight passes through the atmosphere, the shorter wavelengths of light, like blue and green, get scattered away. This leaves the longer wavelengths, like red and orange, to dominate the sky. And voila, you have those stunning, fiery sunsets that are synonymous with autumn. Wow, so that's why the colors are so incredible. I always thought they looked different, but I never knew the reason. It's like nature's own light show, orchestrated by physics. And isn't it amazing how something as simple as a sunset can be explained by science and still retain its sense of wonder and awe? Absolutely. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion, but instead of tears, you get beauty and knowledge. And that's what we're all about on The Deep Dive, right? Uncovering those hidden layers, those unexpected connections that make the world a more fascinating place. Oh, 100%. So I've covered the science of fall colors, the allure of fall books and sunsets. Are you ready to dive in to some of those cozier, more introspective prompts? Oh, absolutely. Because while those outward observations are wonderful, it's the inward reflection that really resonates with me. Let's see what Lestallion has in store for us. You know, speaking of those like cozier, more introspective prompts, the next section, fall changes, really piqued my interest. It moves beyond just like the surface level delights of fall and into these deeper, more universal themes. Oh, tell me more. It's like we're swapping out our pumpkin spice lattes for a little soul searching, right? What kind of prompts are we talking about here? Well, there's one that really stuck out to me. It was, what does the idea of harvest mean to you? And it got me thinking, it's such a loaded word, isn't it? We often associate it with abundance, with reaping what we've sown. But there's another side to it, too. Oh, I see where you're going with this. It's not just about gathering, like, the fruits of our labor, is it? There's this inherent sense of things coming to a close, a cycle ending. Yeah. Almost like nature itself is taking stock. Exactly. And that can be a really powerful metaphor for personal growth. Just as trees shed their leaves to conserve energy for winter, we too can benefit from letting go of what no longer serves us. Old habits, limiting beliefs, even relationships that have run their course. Okay, now you're hitting home. Letting go is hard, but there's something about fall that almost like gives you permission to do it, don't you think? Like it's a natural part of the cycle. I completely agree. It's like fall provides this safe container, this natural rhythm for us to do our own internal shedding, to reflect on what we want to carry forward and what we're ready to release. And that kind of introspection can be so freeing, even if it's a little daunting at first. It's like clearing out the clutter to make space for something new, mm -hmm. which come to think of it is a pretty apt metaphor for fall cleaning. It absolutely is. And speaking of finding peace amidst the change, the next section, Mindful Fall Days, really speaks to that. It's about slowing down, paying attention, and finding those little pockets of stillness in the midst of a season that can often feel quite hectic. Oh, yes. This is where Lestallion really taps into that, like, treat yourself energy, right? Yeah. But in a mindful, intentional way, what kind of prompts resonated with you in this section? Well, there's one that's deceptively simple, but incredibly powerful. Describe a single leaf in as much detail as possible. And it might sound easy, but when was the last time you truly looked at a leaf noticing its veins, its texture, the subtle variations in color? Okay, you got me there. I'm usually too busy crunching them under my boots to appreciate the finer details. Yeah. But I get it. It's that whole mindfulness thing again, right? Yeah. Bringing your full attention to something so ordinary, so easily overlooked. Exactly. And in doing so, we train our minds to be more present, more observant, not just in nature, but in all areas of our lives. It's about finding those moments of awe and wonder, even in the everyday. It's like those mini meditations you hear about, but instead of sitting cross-legged on a cushion, you're like wandering through a forest fully immersed in the sensory experience. I love that analogy. And fall with its vibrant colors, crisp air, and sense of tranquility provides the perfect backdrop for that kind of mindful exploration. It's like nature's giving us this gentle nudge to slow down, to pay attention, to savor these fleeting moments before winter sets in. So we've reflected on the past, 
embrace the present. Are you ready to look ahead? Mm -hmm. Because the stallion definitely seems to be building towards something here. Um, absolutely. And I think this final section, looking ahead, might just be the most important one of all because it's where we connect the lessons of fall to the bigger picture of our lives. Okay, looking ahead, it does have a certain ring to it, doesn't it? Like mm -hmm. we've been on this incredible journey through like the heart of fall, and now it's time to see where the path leads. Exactly. And I think what's so clever about this section is that it challenges our assumptions. You know, we often associate spring with new beginnings, with planting those seeds of intention. But fall with its themes of letting go of preparing for a period of dormancy can be an even more potent time for transformation. That's such an interesting perspective. It's like we're being prompted to kind of take stock of what we've harvested both literally and metaphorically and to use that knowledge to plant seeds for the future. What seeds are you hoping to plant this fall? Hmm, that's a good question. For me, it's about carrying forward that sense of mindful presence we were just talking about. You know, it's so easy to kind of slip back into old habits to let the busyness of life drown out those quiet moments of reflection. But I think fall reminds us that there's incredible power in simply being and noticing the beauty around us and savoring each breath. Hmm. I love that. It's like taking all those vibrant colors, that crisp, clean air, that sense of peace and stillness, and tucking them away in our back pocket yeah. know, for those days when we need it most. Because let's be honest, winter can be a bit of a slog sometimes, right? Absolutely. And those little seeds of intention, those reminders to slow down and appreciate the simple things can make all the difference. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of fall reflections, I want to leave you, our amazing listener, with one final thought. What if fall with its breathtaking beauty and invitation to turn inward is more than just a season? What if it's a reminder that transformation is a constant process? That even amidst the letting go, there's always something new waiting to be born? Beautifully said. And as the leaves fall and the days grow shorter, it's up to each of us to decide what seeds we want to nurture, what growth we want to cultivate, not just in the coming months, but in the year ahead. 